Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, a couple of things before we start off. Uh, so this webinar will be a recorded webinar. So uh, if you have any of your families or friends that would like to, you like to share this webinar with, you can actually visit our um, YouTube page for Nafil Academy and Nafil Dental uh, for the recording of this. So you can actually enjoy it uh, uh, on another time. Um, so. And uh, there'll be a Q&A session at the end of the uh, webinar. So feel free to actually post your questions on the uh, chat box over there. Uh, there's a Q&A box. Um, so, and we'll do our best to answer those questions. So um, again, welcome to today's webinar and thank you for taking time to be with us. Uh, I'm Gaddafi from Nafil Academy. So uh, we at Nafil Academy deliver high quality continual uh, professional education courses and content for dental surgeons and dental support staff. Today, we are partnering with uh, Nafil Dental to bring you this webinar. From Nafil Dental, I'd like to introduce you to this guest speaker, Dr. Asha. Um, she's a dentist at Nafil Dental Novena. Uh, she has been practicing dentistry for nearly 40 years uh, and graduated from National University of Singapore and has been continually updating her um, skills and knowledge in dentistry. Um, health education is an integral part of Dr. Asha's general dental practice as she firmly believes that treatment of a disease is only temporary relief if the patients are not able to keep themselves healthy. Okay, without further ado, Dr. Asha. Hi, good evening to all. Thank you very much. I hope that you've had a good dinner and you will be able to spend the next 45 minutes with me learning about why gum disease is more common than the common cold. Now, some people might have think that this is not quite right, but gum disease is very common. Uh, how common is it, you might ask? Uh, let me just see how I can move my... Okay, there you are. It is a very common disease. In fact, um, the Health Promotion Board back in 2003 did a survey and found that 85% of Singaporeans have some form of the disease. It could be the very early reversible stage of the disease. It could be the more advanced stages, but just think about it, 85%, four out of five people. Look around you, the people around you, they could be having this disease. Let's look at another study, an American study, where they looked at adults over the age of 30. And this time they looked at the more advanced stages, the irreversible stages of the disease, which is called periodontal disease. And they found that nearly half of those above the age of 30 had the disease. And that proportion grows with age. So much so that those above the age of 65, up to 70%, more than two thirds of them have more advanced stages of gum disease. Another interesting statistic that I came across was this. Men are more likely to have gum disease than women. So those of you women out there who are listening to me, after you've listened to me, please share what you learn with the men in your life. Yeah, your husbands, your brothers, your sons, share it so that really the knowledge of gum disease spreads, especially to those who are more likely to have it. You might ask, okay, gum disease, it's common. But the reason why I'm concerned about it, and you should be concerned about it too, is that it is the most common cause of tooth loss. Adults are more likely to lose their teeth through gum disease than through any other illness of the mouth. So what is gum disease? Gum disease is really the common name for something called periodontal disease. So periodontal sounds big. Break it down to small words, peri and odontal, which means around the tooth. So it's 
a disease that affects the tissues around the tooth. Now, if you look into your mouth, yes, you will see your tongue. You will also the, see the white portion of your tooth. The white portion is called the crown. And then you will see the gum. Now, if you were to peel away the gum, you will find that the tooth extends downwards and it is anchored by the bone. The bone keeps your tooth rigid and the gum is actually just a thin layer covering the bone. So periodontal disease is an infection that attacks the gums and bone around the teeth. Why is it so common? Two reasons. One is that it's a slowly developing disease. And two, in its early stages, there is little or no pain. Slowly developing and little or no pain. So it, it's very easy to not know about it or neglect it. But I tell you, even if there is no pain, gum disease can be recognized. So let me show you how. Let's look at this young man. Seems to have quite an ordinary set of teeth, but let's ask him to smile a little bit more broadly. Do you see it now? The red gums? Yes, red gums is one of the first signs of gum disease. Now let's look at this young woman. Her gums, yes, they look a little bit red. They also look rather prominent, rather puffy, don't they? Yes, the gums are more rounded, more prominent, puffy. Some of you may be distracted by this dark area that she's got a little bit of decay, but we'll talk about that in another lecture. But here, let's talk about the gums. And if you look closely, or if you look at it sideways, you will see that they are swollen. So redness of the gums, swelling of the gums, that is the first stage of the disease, the inflammation that your body undergoes when you have gum disease. Another sign, bleeding from the gums. When you brush your teeth and the gums bleed, that is not good. Some people refuse to floss their teeth because they say, every time I floss, the gums bleed. Again, it's a sign of disease. So if there's one thing that you learn from this session, please remember healthy gums do not bleed. So you've seen pictures of the early signs of gum disease, redness of the gums, swelling of the gums, which is all part of inflammation. Then there is bleeding from the gums. So I've shown you pictures of this, but there's one thing that I cannot show you a picture of. And that is the fourth sign of gum disease, which is bad breath. You can have bad breath. Other people will know about it, but they won't tell you about it. Hmm? So all these signs are quite subtle. It's easy to ignore. And indeed, many people do ignore it. And that's how the early stages of gum disease become more advanced. And when they become more advanced, you start to see more things, such as spaces developing between the teeth. Also, the teeth start to look longer because the gums pull away from the teeth. And what is this? Do you see this? That's pus. And when you have pus from the tooth, that's called an abscess, a dental abscess. And if you really ignore even that, your teeth will become shaky. And that is bad news indeed. So those are the late signs of gum disease. Let me go through that again with you. Spaces forming between the teeth, longer looking teeth, shifting of the teeth, the teeth start to move, loosening of the teeth, 
And sometimes you get vague itchiness, aching, a certain discomfort. But there's something here on this list that you would expect from a disease, but it's not there. What do you think that is? Did you guess pain? Yes. By the time you get pain, it is very advanced. Or it could be an acute episode of gum disease. Let's look at this picture. Now, to me as a dentist, this is a thing of beauty. Nice, well-aligned teeth, and the gums are tight and firm around the teeth, tight and firm. Now, if you were to take a cross section through that, you would see something like this. You would see the tooth, the crown, the root, and the root is tightly encased in the bone, and there's a thin, tight covering of gum. This is the healthy state. But with time, you may find that a lot of food debris, um, bacterial deposits, de debris will collect there. And when it collects around the neck of your tooth, the gum will become inflamed. It will become red, swollen. It may bleed. But remember, this is the early stage of the disease. So if you get rid of those deposits, if you get rid of that um, accumulation of debris, it is reversible. So you can go back to health. But as I said, these are very subtle signs. There is no pain. So people can easily ignore it. And when they ignore it, that accumulation of bacteria continues to accumulate around the neck of the tooth. And then it goes down below the gum. When bacteria goes below the gums, what happens is that it produces toxins or poisons that destroy the bone supporting the tooth. Now, when this happens, bone is lost. X-rays are so important in determining this, in, in assessing the amount of bone damage. If you look at the blue line, the blue line shows the healthy level of the bone. But in this unfortunate person, the bone has been lost. And it's been lost so much for this one, about 50% of the bone support has been lost. So it's no wonder that this particular tooth has started to become shaky. So then, that is the late stage of disease when bone around the tooth is destroyed, the tooth starts to become shaky. Again, there may not be any pain, so it may continue. And when it continues and the tooth starts to wobble in the socket, well, that's the terminal stage. There is no going back from there. A lot of people don't understand that our teeth are held by bone. So if you look at this picture of a skull, the skull is primarily of bone, and you can see how that bone supports the teeth. What you see in the mouth is this area. So the bone helps to support your cheeks, your lips, and that is what makes us look good. It makes us look youthful. The support of both the bone and the tooth supporting your lips. And when you lose teeth, you lose bone. And that's how you look. You look concave, collapsed, and the height of your face is also reduced. So it's, yes, uh, when you lose teeth, you lose your ability to eat well, you lose your ability to speak well, and certainly it does make you look so much older. So what causes gum disease? Well, I actually mentioned it. It's bacteria. It's the bacteria that we all have in our mouths, the bacteria that accumulate on our teeth. Have a look at this. Now, this young woman, she has a rather demure smile. And if we were to peel the lips away, this still looks pretty good, but not to a dentist. 
Dentists can see things the average person may not be able to see. And to help you see that, I've colored the teeth, a special dye that shows up the plaque, plaque or the film of bacteria that accumulates around the teeth. And this particular dye is very interesting because it shows the young plaque bacteria that's been accumulating on the teeth for less than 48 hours is pink and bacteria that has been left there for more than 48 hours is colored blue or purple and you can see when bacteria is left there long enough you see the gums have become swollen so how do we prevent gum disease well remove the plaque that's what causes the disease. So remove the bacteria. And that's done by brushing. We all know that. But we need to learn how to use the brush correctly. And many people will ask me, doctor, what's the best toothbrush to use? So I'm reminded of something that a young friend told me recently. She went to see the movie Top Gun. Uh, Top Gun, you know, is a movie about uh, Air Force pilots. And there is one scene in Top Gun where Tom Cruise is saying, it's not the plane, it's the pilot. So when it comes to brushing the teeth, I say, it's not the toothbrush, it's the brusher. It's how you use the brush that matters. So use the toothbrush correctly. First of all, don't prolong the life of your toothbrush like this. When you use a toothbrush that is so splayed like this, you can actually hurt your gums. You may point the toothbrush in one way, but the bristles go another way. So uh, one thing that I tell my patients is look at your toothbrush from the back. If you see the bristles of the toothbrush stick out from the sides, throw it away. Oh, don't throw it away, recycle it. Use your old toothbrush to clean your bathroom tiles or your shoes. One tip that I can give you is please use toothbrushes with soft bristles because with soft bristles, the bristles are flexible enough to go in between the teeth. Well, maybe not right through, and that's why you need to use floss. And when you use floss, again, you need to learn the correct way of using the floss. The floss must go a little bit below the gums because there is a natural space there where bacteria can, can collect. And if you don't like using floss, you find it too difficult, there are other ways of cleaning between the teeth. Uh, these are called interdental brushes which can be very helpful, especially if the spaces between your teeth are large. Whatever the method, it is important that you learn the right technique. Even when you're wearing braces, uh, there are ways of cleaning your teeth so that you can still maintain a high level of hygiene, even with something like braces on. So learn the correct technique. Ask your dentist to show you. It's it's probably the most valuable service that your dentist can do for you. Remember, health begins with hygiene. Home care, what you do every day for your teeth at home is so important. And this needs to be supported with professional cleaning. Why go to the dentist for cleaning? For two reasons. One is that the dentist can get into places that you can't get into, and the dentist can remove dirt deposits that you can't get rid of. One of them being calculus or tartar. Calculus or tartar is hardened bacteria, so hard that you cannot remove it with your toothbrush. And one of the most common places where calculus or tartar accumulate is on the inside of your lower front teeth. So please use your tongue and feel 
the inside of your lower front teeth. If you feel something hard, something rough, something crusty on the inside of the lower front teeth, make an appointment with your dentist. That is calculus that needs to be removed. And you can see in this person, the outside of the teeth look very nice and clean, but the inside tells a different story. Calculus does not form just on the inside. It can form on the outside as well, as you can see in this person. And you can see very clearly how the gums are swollen. That's definitely gum disease. The other thing to keep in mind is that even kids can have gum disease. You can see in this picture, this is a child, the upper permanent teeth have not grown yet. They are still just in the gum, they have not grown. And you can see areas where tartar has formed. And you can see how the gums have become swollen. So even kids have, can have gum disease. One of the favorite tools that dentists use to get rid of tartar is an instrument called an ultrasonic scaler. And this, although this particular picture may make you look a little bit scary, it's actually a very benign instrument. Ask your dentist to demonstrate it to you and you will be surprised how gentle this instrument is. It helps to get rid of the hardened deposits by literally vibrating it off from the surface of your tooth. This is an example. You can see the brown, dirty looking tartar that's causing the gums to be swollen. And this is before scaling. After scaling, after the tartar has been removed, yes, there is some bleeding. Remember, bleeding is because the gums are not healthy. But one week after, when the patient exercises diligent brushing and flossing at home, do you see how beautiful those gums are? The gums are pink, the gums are tight around the gums. The gums are tight around the teeth. So to prevent gum disease, you need to have good daily hygiene, how you brush your teeth, floss your teeth. And of course, you must have regular dental checkups and you must have professional cleaning. So this is all very basic information, right? Everyone knows it. So the question is, why is it not done? I have asked people why they don't do it. And the most common answer they give me is no time. Singaporeans, yes, are very busy people. They will tell me, you know, when I ask them about flossing, they'll say, we ain't got time. I think the real reason is that they don't think it's important because if something is important, you will make the time for it. Then people don't want to spend the money. Yes, I can sympathize with this. But think, if you do not um, spend some money to take care of yourself, you might spend more money later on when things become much worse. And people may not see the dentist in time because of fear. Uh, I say you should be more fearful of the consequences of getting treatment, of not getting treatment at the right time. When you don't get early care, things get worse. That can be even more scary. There's something else I'd like you to think about. Would you eat with a dirty fork? If you saw bugs crawling over your spoons or forks, would you eat with that same spoon or fork, would you? So then why would you want to eat your food with teeth that's covered with bugs? Remember what causes gum disease? It's bacteria. And bacteria can spread from person to person. We've come out of the pandemic 
we know how germs can spread. So many different ways that germs can spread. Even blowing on hot food to cool it. I know so many loving parents, they take a, a hot spoon of porridge, they blow it to cool it, and then they use that to feed their child. Let's look at this picture. Grandpa kneels next to the baby and tells baby, come, can you give me a piece of birthday cake? And baby doesn't use a serving plate. They just shove the cake into grandpa. You might think it's very cute, but where would baby's hands go next? Into baby's own mouth. That's another way of spreading germs, right? Indeed, there's scientific proof from Brazil to Japan that bacteria can be transmitted from parents to young children. So parents out there who are listening, remember that your dental health, your attitude to dental care can affect the health of your children. Remember, you're not healthy without good oral health. I had introduced a word earlier, inflammation. Some of you may not be familiar with that term. Inflammation is your body's defense to anything that might harm it. Your body has a defense system, just like countries have a defense system. If there is an attack from an enemy, they would bring out the artillery, they would bring out the air force, they would send out troops, they would uh, bring in their armored trucks. So there are so many ways to attack the enemy. The same with your body. Your body has an immune system, a defense system that has many cells and chemicals that are used to kill bugs. But think about it. Even if a country were to beat out the enemy, think about the devastation of war. Now think, what if your body is constantly at war? This is an interesting study. It shows that a large proportion of Singaporeans can spend many years of their life with gum disease. And that means they have chronic inflammation, chronic, long-term, their bodies are at war. And that chronic inflammation produces resistance to disease. So yes, there have been journal articles, magazine articles that show that having bad oral health can make you more prone to diseases. It is possible for bacteria from your mouth to go into your bloodstream and affect your heart. Diabetes, let me quote the president of the uh, Singapore a periodontal disease uh, society. Dr. Chang has said that the consequences of diabetes, it reduces your immune response, your defense system, and so you're more likely to have severe gum disease. Indeed, those with diabetes are two to three times more likely to have the more advanced form of gum disease. So remember that your mouth is an integral part of your body. Your body is an integrated whole. What happens in your mouth doesn't stay in your mouth. It can affect other parts of your body. To find out more about this, you can visit my blog site. Uh, just go to drasha.sg and you can read more about this. And there are other articles not just on gum disease, but other aspects of dental care. So there are many factors that contribute to gum disease. Certainly, poor hygiene is number one. Then there is diabetes that reduces your immunity. Smoking, I'm afraid there's nothing good I can say about smoking. Indeed, those who smoke are six times more likely 
to have bone loss around their teeth if they do have gum disease. Genetics, unfortunately, we can't choose our parents. And having crooked teeth, yes, having crooked teeth does make you more prone to gum disease because crooked teeth are more difficult to clean. So have a look at these teeth. This is the outside view. And if you look at the inside view, you see the tartar that's formed there, the stains. So that is a very difficult tooth to clean. Let's look at this. Remember that white spot? That white spot is pus. There is an abscess around this tooth. And very unfortunately, that tooth had to be removed. It was too far gone. This is a more dramatic case where the irregularity is more severe. And these two teeth were in very bad shape, very bad shape, and they had to be removed. Fortunately, this was a remarkable woman. She was 60 years old, and she was very diligent, very conscientious, conscientious, and she really cleaned her teeth very well. She came for multiple sessions of cleaning, had the full session of uh, full program of treatment to treat her gum disease and her gums became a lot better, a lot healthier. And she said, yes, I am healthier now. I'm happier now. And now I'm so happy, I wanna look nice. So at the age of 60, she agreed to wear braces and she straightened her teeth. And you can see uh, a few braces had to be, uh, she was still continuing treatment, but you can see how her teeth look so much better because she was willing to go through the full treatment and even go through braces. So there are many ways that we can straighten teeth now. And again, this is a big topic that can be addressed in another talk. So the take home messages, well, most of you are already at home, but the message that I would really like you to spread to your uh, friends and family is that healthy gums do not bleed. And don't wait for pain, because if you have pain, you're really waiting for things to become really bad. And visit the dentist regularly. When you do things on a regular basis, treatment becomes simple and you will look forward to seeing your dentist because your dentist will make your teeth feel smooth and nice. And ultimately, you've got to make the choice to be healthy. The truth is we all know this, but choosing to practice it, that's our choice. So I hope that by seeing some of these pictures and understanding the message, you will exercise the choice to make yourself healthy and maintain good health. So, are there any questions now? Let me check. I need to wear my glasses now. Oh, okay. I got a compliment. Thank you very much for your compliment. Um, I'm really looking for questions. I'll be happy to answer questions. Ah, yes. Uh, one question that's often asked is, um, if you get gum disease once and you treat it, would you get gum disease again? Unfortunately, yes. If you have COVID once, you can get COVID, uh, you can get COVID a second time. It's all about practicing good habits to keep the bacteria away so that you will continue to keep yourself habit. So just like we constantly have to wash our hands in the same way, we've got to keep our teeth healthy. Uh, someone has raised their hand. How do I see the raising hand?
someone has raised a hand. Maybe they lowered the hand now. Uh, perhaps uh, Nafield Academy can help me. I don't see the raised hands. I can I see the symbol for raising the hands, but I don't know how to activate your question. So um so if you any of the um, participants and attendees that have any questions, you can actually type it in the QA session so that Dr. Asha can actually see your questions. Uh, because we have not um, enabled the um the mic function for the webinar. So if you have any questions, just type it out and Dr. Asha will do her best to actually answer them. There's a Q&A tab in the Zoom, um, in the Zoom toolbar, so you can just type it over there. Yes, there's a question here. Um, the 60 year old had braces. Yes, that's right. You can have braces at any age. Age is not the limitation. It's your desire to get the treatment. Okay, the question here, what are teeth aligners? Aligners, the word align, means to straighten up. So aligners are devices, uh, appliances that help to straighten your teeth. That's what teeth aligners are. It's uh, a method used to straighten your teeth. More questions? We have uh, set aside quite a bit of time for questions. So. I'm really happy to answer questions. When I get questions, I feel that I've really been talking to people because right now I'm just talking to my laptop. Oh yes, um, there's a question here of um, what is the difference between plaque and uh, tartar. Uh, plaque is the soft film of bacteria that collects on the surface of the teeth. And plaque is what you should be removing with your toothbrush every day. Uh, it's something that will inevitably build up on your teeth. So you brush your teeth every day, ideally after every meal, brush your teeth, floss your teeth to get rid of the bacteria. And that will help to, um, that will help to reduce the bacteria in your mouth. That's plaque, soft. Calculus or tartar is hard. Indeed, calculus comes from the Greek word, which means stone. So it is as hard as stone. Once it becomes stone, we cannot uh, remove it by brushing or flossing. We do need to use special instruments to remove it. Uh, there is a question here between interdental brushes and floss. Uh, floss is a very versatile, very simple um, way of cleaning in between the teeth. It can be used for tight spaces. Uh, it can be used for wider spaces. Uh, but I admit it takes a little bit of dexterity to use floss. So for those people who have difficulty using floss, then interdental brushes can be a much easier way of cleaning. Uh, interdental brushes, they come in different sizes. So they, there are bigger sizes that can be used for big spaces between the teeth. And there are smaller brushes that can be used for tighter areas. Uh, the more versatile instrument is uh, floss. Uh, but if you have difficulty using floss, please ask your dentist to demonstrate to you how to use interdental brushes. 
then there is a question on uh, periodontal disease treatment. Uh, it really depends upon how advanced the periodontal disease is. Uh, it always begins by removing deposits on your teeth. That is the first line of treatment. It can be done with scaling and polishing. It can be done by deep cleaning under local anesthetic. Uh, it can be done through um, uh, processes called uh, uh, debrimore or curatage. And sometimes in cases where bone has been lost, then uh, you may need to have much more advanced, more complex treatment, whereby attempts can be made to replace that bone or improve the level of the gum. Uh, that really requires some form of surgery. Okay, uh, there is a question here about uh, diabetes. Uh, diabetes and the frequency of uh, gum disease. Diabetes and gum disease, there is an interesting relationship. One affects the other. If the diabetes is well controlled, it can be easier to control the gum disease. If the gum disease is very bad, it can affect how the control of gum disease is. So it's very dynamic. There's an interplay between. So certainly you've got to make sure that your diabetes is well controlled. Uh, make sure you're taking your medicines regularly and your diet is well controlled. Then of course, um, if you find that your gum disease is flaring up, really spend time with your dentist, learning how to clean your teeth properly because you may think that you're brushing your teeth well, but there may be areas that you can't get into. There may be problems that may not have been identified. So you may need to take x-rays. You may need to have certain examinations done. So really spend some time with your dentist talking about the kind of problems that you are facing. Um, there is uh, a question here about treating a patient if there is diabetes. We can certainly treat uh, patients. Uh, we can certainly give dental treatment to uh, people who have diabetes. There's nothing stopping that. Uh, but as I explained earlier, uh, one affects the other. So you've got to make sure that both the diabetes and the dental conditions are treated. Um, Question again about interdental brushes, whether it can clean into the gum line. It can definitely clean the junction, the junction of the tooth and the gums, it can clean it. Uh, but if there is a big space, if there is a depth below the gums, then that might require special treatment by the dentist. Uh, there are certain products, um, uh, certain products and uh, that um, helps to change the bacteria that is in the mouth. Uh, these are called probiotics. Uh, perhaps the most common example of a probiotic would be things like uh, yogurt. Uh, there are certain uh, commercial uh, formulations of these probiotics. And probiotics can be used to help change the bacteria within your mouth. Remember your mouth, your gut, it's just one long tube. So it can help to change the bacteria in your mouth. But if you are having a lot of deposits, plaque, tartar, calculus, all that has got to be removed first. You've got to remove the obvious uh, deposits because that's the bacteria that's causing the disease. So that's got to be removed. Your gum disease needs to be controlled. And then products that are probiotics may prove to be helpful. So I would describe it as a supplement. Uh, 
Oh, there's a question here about vitamin C. Uh, yes. Uh, long, long, long ago, uh, when, uh, oh, I don't know, back in the 17th, 18th centuries, uh, when sailors were on their boats and they were traveling these long expanses of ocean, they didn't have any fresh food. Uh, certainly fresh vegetables and fruits, they did not have access to that. So these were sailors that really had acute and very severe lack of vitamin C. And these sailors, they had a condition uh, which made them develop gum disease. And so there is the understanding that lot lack of vitamin C can cause gum disease. Uh, in the modern day, in the modern day, where we have access to fresh fruits and vegetables, I think it's very hard to find someone who's really lacking in vitamin C. Uh, so popping vitamin C pills to get rid of gum disease is not the answer. You need to remove the cause of gum disease, which really is the bacteria. And of course, having a well-balanced diet is essential. Well-balanced diet, lots of fresh fruits, vegetables, that will make you healthy overall. It will help you generally keep yourself healthy. Um, Dr. Asha, there's one question. Um... I think it's right at the top. How can we treat patients if there's diabetes? Uh, yes, um, you can definitely treat patients who have diabetes. You know? The diabetes has got to be well controlled and we treat the patient just like any other dental patient. There's nothing stopping the patient. Yes, so make sure you take all your medications and uh, we will treat you the same way. Nothing very... Um, unusual about it. Uh, oh, here's someone who brushes their teeth four times a day. Um, the question is, is there such a thing as too much brushing? If you brush too hard, if you brush uh, too vigorously, if you brush up and down, up and down, that could hurt the gums, it could hurt the teeth. So brushing too frequently, perhaps not, but brushing the wrong way, yes, if you keep brushing the teeth the wrong way with too much force and uh, too hard, yes, that might cause damage to your teeth. But it's a very good habit to brush after meals. Lovely to get all your questions. I like getting questions. It means people out there have been listening to me. Thank you very much. I think that's all the time that we have for tonight. Dr. Asha, I think you just answered the last question. Um, any, uh, any closing uh, parts from you? Closing words. Well, uh, I guess I could uh, tell people that if they want to see me, uh, they can definitely, where is my next slide? Hmm. Ah, yes. You can write to me through my uh, website. That's my website. And of course, you are certainly open to actually visiting me. And I'm available at these two clinics. Is there more? Okay, I think that's it. Thank you very much, Dr. Asha, for your time and sharing us uh, all this um, grateful wisdom. Um, thank you, everyone, for taking part. Um, great to see lots of questions and uh, great interaction from the team. I think uh, that's all for tonight. Thank you very much. Look forward for the next webinar. Okay, it's a pleasure. Yeah, good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.